Hi guys and welcome back to the Wednesday News Show. On today's show, we got Anna Hazelnut sending an incredibly hard trout route, Adamondra in Malta putting up a ton of new routes, and stay tuned for the awesome deal of the week. It's been a busy week, Teresa. Uh, I don't indeed. know if you've noticed. I don't know where you've been. You haven't been in the office. I did a circle <laughs> of Europe. I've worked I know, in the meanwhile. <laughs> you've been train working. What's it? Working train on trains. Uh, You're very good at that. You'd like find out the Wi-Fi, figure out who's the best person to sit next to. Tap them on the shoulder so they can hotspot me. Yeah, yeah. I've done that <laughs> a couple of times. Exactly. So where have you been? I did a circle because, mm-hmm. you know, I was in Frankfurt. Okay. Then I went down to uh, Sardinia for another job and then i went to spain and then i came back to switzerland wow a, a circle all right yeah or by train well no it is a bit difficult to go to, I- to an island by train fair enough but anyway let's start uh, let's start with some climbing news and i've got news from austria sub enthusiast hannah hazelnut went on a trip with tom randall to climb prince of hoffnung a super aesthetic trad climb overlooking the trout of borstner splatte in austria the test piece stands at E9 slash E10 or 8B slash plus, and it was first climbed in 2009 by Beat Kammerlander. Anna faced a lot of doubts and uncertainties while trying the route. The weather didn't play ball and she had an underlying shoulder injury. Plus, the line is crazy dangerous and has some serious runouts on tiny gear. She tells all about her ascent on her Instagram post, including that she took a massive whipper from the top. So, Anna, with this ascent, is the fifth woman to climb this route. Okay, interesting. And uh, the other day, actually, Tom posted a picture or a screen grab from a go- from GoPro footage of him taking the whipper from the top. Right. And, uh, yeah, it just, uh, you know, looks like a long way. What, his personal view? Yes, yes. I think all of that footage is going to come out sometime yeah, soon. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be a couple of YouTube yes. videos. Yeah, a couple. That's exciting to see. That's an amazing route, that one. Indeed, indeed. Uh, Definitely like a dream line for, for any trout climber. Yeah, it's big like time. Super aesthetic, like perfect cut line, tiny, tiny slab, fun stuff. Uh, I'm slightly panicking because I don't know where we're going next. Well, there is a lot of sport climbing news this week, isn't there? With like True. nine bees. But I don't think that's where we're going. Oh, Just where do you want to go? Fill some space. Fill some space for two seconds. Um, let's talk about climbing. I had a really good climbing weekend, if anybody cares. I found a project. Oh, yeah? <laughs> oh, my God. I found the project. I well, think so. Dare we ask what grade? Um, the elusive grade of 8A. Oh! Wow. Yeah. Are you yeah. going to document it? Uh, I should. Get I in should. touch with Tom Randall and Pete Whitaker. They'll come and film it. But it's not. Is it slabby? No, there are no cracks. No slabs. It's nice, pockety, like a jog when you need it. It's like fun, you okay. know. There's no, there will be pain, but not that type of pain. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. A nice, a nice, a nice AA. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Speaking of uh, nice routes, Carl Traversi has climbed a very nice route in Switzerland. Acclaimed American climber Carlo Traversi has repeated the Dave Graham problem from Dirk Grows the Flowers, 8C V15, in Caronico, Switzerland. Traversi, whose achievements range from hard sport to hard trad, last climbed in 8C in 2020 and said in an interview with 8A.NU that even though he had almost climbed the problem back in 2013, he struggled on the moves from Dirk Grows the Flowers, but on the same go he felt weightless and the easiest climbing he had had on the trip. So yeah, nice problem from Dirk Rose of Flowers, Dave Graham. It's always good to see a Dave Graham problem being repeated, I think. There are so many, though. But that's the thing, but they're all classics. The classics, it's like, first ascent of that route was like, what, 2000 and, you know, double zeros. Two? Like 2003, probably? Five? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, was, yeah. I don't know, yeah, like, n- new old classics. Big time. Does that make any sense? Well, he's like, uh, he's a lot older than you think he is, Dave Graham. Really? He's, he's, he's older than me. I think oh, he's like yeah. 40, 42, 43. No. He's definitely plus 40. You think so? Positive. I feel Google can just tell us his Yeah, age we'll Google it after this next story. Stuff. What's the next story? Next story is about 30-year-old, I hope. I didn't just throw a n- number out. Uh, Adam Andra, because he's down on a kind of family holiday in Malta. Adam Andra and his family are down on the Mediterranean island of Malta. He climbed eight routes ranging from 8A plus to 8B plus and gathered a bunch of first ascents, including Fight Club, an 8B, and Winds of Change, an 8B plus, 
and climbed second go Ain't Sane in the Membrane, an 8C, and possibly the hardest route on the island. So most of these routes were on-sites. So casual, cheeky on-sites of really? 8A pluses, AB pluses. Cheeky Adam. Well, it's like a holiday for him, isn't it? Sounds like it. I mean, it was literally a holiday, though, wasn't it? Yeah, but I don't know. Don't you like, you know, actually take time off? But then again, if you're if you really love it, why? He loves it. He loves it. I can't see him like like bringing out his tennis rackets and going to hit a ball with his wife. No, because that would unbalance your shoulders, right? True. Yeah, true. And you might over grip the tennis racket, and it can't quite the same feel. Like like tennis is all about your wrists, right? I guess. Not he would definitely never let it swing. Like he would. Like he will never lose a tennis racket. He'll always like grip it. <laughs> just wondering, I've had in my head like him missing a ball and getting really annoyed, but like he'd do his scream. Yeah. Be like, oh, he'd do the same scream if he won as well. Ah! He'd probably be so strong on like one hit. True. Mm. Yeah, maybe he should take up tennis. <laughs> Why Adam, not? Adam, if you're watching this, uh, try out tennis. You might be really good. We think you would be. Next up, we've got some hard sport climbing news from Spain. Gript reports that Spanish climber Jorge Diaz Rulo has made the first repeat of the full journey, 9B, 515B in Margalef, Spain. The route is made up of two halves of equal difficulty. In 2022, the Spanish sport climber tackled the journey, 8C plus 9A, and earlier this month he sent the second half of the route, and four days later he had put the whole route together. Every week he's sending something super hard there in Margala. <laughs> Big time. Him and Loic Zahani, who we're going to talk about later on, they've starting to build up some seriously impressive send trains. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like there was a point before Seb Bouin went a bit stratospheric and he was like just ticking off like 90 plus 90. Oh, nine, you nine, think nine, they're nine, in nine, that nine. phase? I think they're in that phase. I think maybe next year, I think certainly Loic Zahani is going to explode. Mm -hmm. I think Jorge de Arruda won't, will probably I be I think Jorge is cooking up something uh, quite big. Because from his Instagram, like, it seems that, um, yeah, he's trying out, like, the next big thing. I think with all these climbers, what they need to do in order to kind of, like, be recognized as the kind of next Seb or the next Adam Andre or the next mm. Jakob Schubert, maybe even, or, or Stefano Gosofi, is, like, do it outside of a specific country. So Loic, Loic Zahani does a lot in France, right? Yeah. Jorge does a lot in Spain. Yeah. I've no doubt that they can do it like abroad, but they haven't necessarily done a huge amount abroad. There's those test pieces that you kind of think that they need to go and try and do and and project and 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 that's when they'll kind of go to the next level. What should you do? do have Loic's do go story ahead now. with Loic, yes. Okay, let's do not Loic now. ATA.NU reports that France's serial sender Loic Zahani has made the first ascent of a route he named Brooklyn. It was bolted by his father and he has given it a grade of 9B. The route is an Orgon in the natural reserve of Alpil in the south of France. In all, according to Loic, the route contains 62 moves and is a mixture of strength and resistance with two cruxes. Loic's Sen train has been building steadily for a couple of years now and it doesn't look like stopping, with more 9Bs and 9B pluses on the horizon. We have been covering Loic for like the last kind of couple of years and it's slowly, yes. steadily kind of just been going, going, going. Like, and it was 9As, 9As, 9As a lot, and then 9A pluses, and now it's like he's on the 9B side of things. And that's a fast ascent as well. Well, it's quite handy with the dad at Bolt's roots. That's true, if your dad bolts a 9B yeah. route. <laughs> it's like, here's a present for you, son. Yeah. Good luck trying it. I think he's gonna be the next Seb Bois at least. Loic. Yeah, I say that because he's French. But... Speaking about Seb, uh, the Real Rock Tour is going around with Seb's uh, DNA movie. True. And Jakob Schubert just put out a video of him touching DNA. That's what it's called. I'm not making this up. I promise. Touching. But it's called touching DNA. Yeah. And um, that's a video. Yes, it's up on YouTube. Right. I re highly recommend it because you can just see the immensity of of the crag and how futuristic, I guess, uh, sub one line sub one's line is. That's cool. I don't know the trailer of the trailer of DNA from Jakob. Right. Anyway, I meant to move in on to the next news story that's more sport climbing news with a very, very lonely 9A roundup. British climber Luke Dawson climbed Esclata Masters in Perles in Spain. He describes it as a perfect route and thinks it's way harder than any 8C plus he has done. 
It's got the masters. You said it. You thought it was 9A. It's definitely 9A. I belayed somebody on it, so it has to be 9A. Because you know, if I get that belay in, it would be my hardest belay. So they better do it. Who have you belayed on Escota Masters? A friend. You can't say their name? <laughs> yeah, I can. Who is it? Uh, a friend. All right. Okay. okay. We yes. spoke about this last week, actually, this route, because <laughs> Angel uh, Angelica, Angelica Raina yeah. just climbed it after having projected it for like a couple of years. Mm. After having, well, she's normally an ice climber, but right. she does obviously climb very hard as well. Uh, so yeah, it's, just, it's, a, it's, it's obviously in condition, in mint condition. In mint condition? Yeah. I think it gets sun in the afternoon, morning. Okay. It gets sun in the morning, so they have to go in the afternoon. Has it got a uh, toilet in, at the bottom of the crag? No, no. No? You're meant to bring your shovel to crags. True, but sometimes when it's rocky and there's not that much dirt, is it not quite, I find it quite difficult. Challenge to everybody that's worried about this. Why not just go, you know, before at home with a toilet in the premises? But sometimes you need like a little approach to kind of like shake things loose. Right? Really? I and don't you get know. there and you know. have a cup of coffee from your flask and you're like, whoa, here we go. Uh, and then all the beer that you had the night before and the, the Chinese. I <laughs> it drinking. It comes out. No? Just no. me? No. Yes. Nobody else warm up for a day of sport climbing like that? Mm. No. Okay. The Chinese the night before. That has to be in the menu. Yeah, big yes. time. Bosh. Okay. Uh, all right, next up, we've got some hard trad mix climbing from America. 18-year-old American climber William Moss has made the first ascent of best things in life are free at the Traps Crag in the Gunks, just to the north of New York in America. Moss, who has been sending hard trad from a young age, claims that this route is a direct variation to Friend Zone, an 8C plus route he climbed two years ago. Both these routes are particularly interesting as they are a mixture of bolts and gear, and the bolts coming at an early stage in the route making the danger on the route equal to a traditional one, where gear needs to be placed rather than bolts being in the wall. 8a.nu claims that this could therefore be a contender for the hardest trad route in the world, but if those claims are made, the obvious answer will be that if the bolts have been used, it's not a trad route. In any case, an incredible achievement by a climber, still only 18 years old. Okay, amazing. Definitely. Right? He's only 18. Yes. And he's sending one of the hardest, one of the hardest mixed routes in the world. Okay. Like that's, uh, that's a given. The trad thing is an interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. Tyler commented last week, Will Moss sent a 9A trad mixed route in the gunks called the best things in life for free. Nicholas Budka uh, replied saying, R the route involves a 25 run out through the, the V13 crux. I mean, I was just hearing that description, I kind of, does it matter if it makes, not mix? You want to fall on bolt anyway. Like 25 meters is a serious run out. Yeah. No, Plus to do like the hardest moves. But like moves. whilst climbing on gear and having to place that next bit of gear after that P13, correct? Gosh. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. Wow. No, um, no, no. That's And he's only 18. Big... I don't yeah. know why we haven't heard more about Will Moss, but I'm... We will. We will. We will. Him and Loic. Yes. Future. <laughs> the future. Because I have heard about him a couple of times. And that uh, that that HC plus route that he did when it, like two years ago when he was only sixteen, mm. he's a big guy. Like he's not small. He's got a big arm span, wing span, ape, ape index. He's got a big ape in, in the in, or exactly. Or to stay into the frame. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's impressive. Very impressive. Well done, Will. Can't wait to hear more about what you get up to in the future. Well What's done. next? Nine B counter. Nine B counter. <laughs> We got two 9Bs. Are you stuck at... Uh... Yeah, no, I was just still okay. shrugging. So well, got... elongated shrug. <laughs> we got three points for Jorge and other three points for Loic. Cool, what's the deal of the week? There's three parts to it. Okay. First part is this guy. Do you know what this guy is? It's the, the new Scarpa <laughs> Vapor S in... Smoke yellow. <laughs> if anybody, I did see, I did see uh, Nathan's um, show of uh, of this new shoe on the Scarpa YouTube yeah, channel. Yeah, they're quite exciting. They're very exciting. Uh, but if if this is for the podcasts, we have a new Scarpa shoe. It's back in stock. Scarpa's back in stock, including this guy. What would you describe this as? Like a sport climbing, bouldering? Yeah, it's kind I of. I need a shoe in my hand because honestly, it's too far there. That for me is like a sport climbing. 
uh, One Piece So. Okay, it's Vibram Excess Grip 2. So yeah. yeah, could be a good sport climbing shoe. Uh, but yeah, full sole. But it's quite soft. It's like first impressions. We should do unboxing videos now. I mean, if that it's like have... a Vapor V, it's like that's kind of a bit of an all rounder, isn't it? It's like kind of all day sport climbing type shoe. Yeah, like super precise, nice and pointy, not an absurdly big toe patch, but what's needed. Nice intermediate type, sh type shoe. I Vap mean, Vapor V always did very well as an intermediate shoe. You would describe it as an intermediate shoe. Uh, Alex Hoover climbs like the hardest routes with like. La Sportiva Mitos. I don't think sh shoes that matter that much, do they? What you said is, is totally true. I was just saying that like this, uh, the Vapor V, this is the yes. Vapor S, the Vapor V was like, was always, for me, was always like in the reviews that we did was seen as like a, that like the shoe after your your beginner shoe kind of thing. Oh, right. Like a good progression shoe to take you from like intermediate into Yeah, uh, this in makes sense. So maybe this is kind of and an evolution of that. it's slightly asymmetric or extremely asymmetric. It's very nice, very nice. Anyway, so Scarpa are back in stock. So we've had a bit of a period where we haven't had the best stock of Scarpa, but they're now back in stock. So obviously all this kind of stuff as well. Dragos, uh, Instincts S, Instincts VR, S is wise. All of those, the Instincts line is back in stock. I checked. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Instinct, very popular shoe. And then next up, we've got a climbing technology. Yes, all this indeed. week, just for one week only, 30% uh, off. Up to 30% off. Up to 30% off, sorry. Which we do have on display the click up, which is a handy... Um, you love that, right? Yes, that's mine. That's your purple clip up. Where's the up. Uh, carabiner that comes with it? Just beside it. Okay, cool. Uh, just checking. And there's also the Alpine up, 15% off on the website. So for anybody that likes the clip, click up and wants to use it with double ropes, that's available too. Big time. And what's the third part of... Well, it was the like Scarpa stuff. back in stock. Scarpa Vapor S, 30% off. Okay, so it's two Scarpers and 30% off climate technology. Exactly, yeah. Cool. Mm. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Not for the show because we've got medias. Medias. Do we? Do we? Yes. There's an episode <laughs> out of Studio Vlogmasters. We filmed the final and here is the finals highlight episode. Okay, maybe. You filmed some of that, right? Yes. So uh, I was up top overlooking the whole scenery, trying mm -hmm. to communicate with Matt with like, I don't know, hand gestures of what to film. And uh, yeah, we filmed it. Went well. Flo edited it. Flo edited it. Did a great job. It was a really cool comp. I think it was the first like open comp I ever went to. What, back in the day or this year? No, ever. Oh, really? I think so. This is I the first time you've been to it this year? Studio Block, That was your yeah. first time? Yeah. I only did like the covers when I first got here, but no, it was a super cool comp. I suppose we've had a couple of years off because of uh, COVID. Uh, COVID. But some of their staff actually had COVID and they weren't there. But COVID's still... back! No, oh, no, brilliant! No. That's not the news oh, this week. that's great news. I missed it. You missed it. it. Yeah. You, go, you passed it to me last time, so... Really? <laughs> yes. I wonder how I did that. Because <laughs> I went on a shoot. <laughs> right, okay. uh -huh. All anyway, right, anyway um, what's next? Uh, that's it. Comment of, Comment the, of week. the week. Weird for fish says, I don't know. I might select tooth removal. He's speaking in reference to uh, whether Matt would rather go on a uh, expedition to Greenland where it's minus 40 and spend about four or five days up on the wall or go to the dentist and have all your teeth removed without any anesthetic. All your teeth, but then you are a mouthless fish. We could have them replaced with fakies. Um, no, I wouldn't pick any. Why would, oh, Greenland, big wall, adventure time. No, yeah, exactly. why not, yeah. obviously. That's Frost, a crack. Frostbite. Uh, my comment is from Oren uh, Coley. Were we discussing about his, um, how to pronounce his name last week? 
A little bit of that. Yeah. But more, I think the comment you're about to read out is more about digging into, digging, digging holes. Exactly. He says, reference point. Someone dug out footholds on a different climb at the forest rock. Not on Ultra Instinct. Those holds are back underground now, though. Haha, <laughs> face. <laughs> yeah, with that laugh. <laughs> Thank you for the information, Aaron. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we still don't know whether it's Coley or Collie. Ah. Coley like the dog or Coley like the North Pole, Cole? Maybe write that in, in the comments. That'd be good. Uh, and if you've got nice comments, we Keep don't want to hear coming. them. We want to hear horrible comments. Like I always say, bad comments are the best. Are they? Yes. Okay. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.